think one of my biggest fears in life is to leave this realm and to be forgotten. I saw a meme maybe or somebody saying on the internet, they're like, you know, the last thing you had on and you die in it is gonna be your ghost outfit for fucking ever. Just in case I'm a ghost, you know, let it be a cute outfit. We are outside of Sutan Amrul, AKA Raja's place. We're about to explore his incredible closet. Someone like Sutan, who expresses their art in every aspect of their lives, not just their work, not in one place or another place, but in their whole self. That is what really fascinates me in a person. And I really literally live to be expanded by that kind of inspiration and creativity. It's literally, I salivate. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are oh, you? It's so nice to see you. Nice to see you. Want to come look. up? Okay, yeah. Let's go. Thank you. All right. Come on in. Welcome to Whoa, my home. Oh, this is <laughs> amazing. So actually what you're seeing now is a very like tidied version. Tamed. Yeah, tamed and tidied version of mm -hmm. what my home normally looks like. Cause this is not only costume storage and archival space, but also a workspace. And what do you do in this workspace? Creating is all that I do. Which is why the drag is just a small part of who you are because I can see that your whole entire life is creation. I'm, I don't know if the drag part is the small part of my life. Maybe not but small. My thing is I like creating the drag more than I like mm. performing in drag sometimes. If I just fabricate, I imagine things and I make them. I'm a huge believer of sustainability and keeping things for its special quality that can be used into another piece later. So hoarding, essentially. Is it hoarding or is it actually caring so much about each piece and it's like dressing in a way that isn't disposable. I believe that. I was also a child that really spent a lot of time alone. All I've ever wanted to do is just, you know, daydream all yeah. day and uh, make stuff and pretend. Mm -hmm. That's what sustains me and makes me useful. Can you, can we hear about everything that you're wearing? This is actually very recent. This is Jean-Paul Gaultier, mm -hmm. but it's a reimagining of my favorite Jean-Paul Gaultier collection in 1994. And you know, in 1994, Ooh. I was 19 years old, yeah. maybe. I did not have Gaultier money. Right. So here, this is sort of me, again, just, just living, living my inner young person who remembers the value and the emotional impact that this look had on me at 19. The jewelry is from China. I got these in Shanghai and Beijing. I noticed them at like a night market. I just find them so special. And, they are like and... art pieces. What is the next thing that you want to put on? This is what I'm wearing next. And then it's got to go with the, with the spike jacket just to keep it all in theme, you know? This is giving me my San Francisco fantasy. I was just in San Francisco for Pride. You know, little St. Mark's, Lower East Side, punk, Basquiat, one whole era and one outfit, fetish. <laughs> yes, please. Love this. What I'm wearing right now is definitely like my ninth grade fantasy right now. My family was poor and right. thrift, thrift shops were like, you know, the, the place to go to create and to get to wear what you wanted. I didn't know what my parents' reactions would always be. So I would always find a, a surrogate family, you know, the, the yeah. non-blood related family yeah. that we have, especially as queer people. Found. And there are people that I consider my family that I've known for decades that were there to support me in all of my craziness. I wouldn't even call it crazy. I call it sane. <laughs> I think it's sane. Same, same. I yeah. think it's sane. Um, I'd love to show you a little bit of my like leisure wear. I love a fucking caftan. Oh, yeah. Just balls out and, you know, mm -hmm. frolicking in my garden. Yeah. I also love vacations. So I like clothes that I can kind of go and wear on a holiday. And you know what, sometimes it's a, it's a vacation at home, like shit. Like why not have a vacation at home every day? You know, if you can't go to Puerto Vallarta. Bring Puerto Vallarta fuck, to you. Yeah, just have all the shit you like around you, smoke some weed, drink some wine, have, have a vacation every day. These shoes I've had for like about 15 years. And the last transformation was I added claws to it because my Many of my friends like to make fun of my toes and call them claws. And I was like, oh really? You wanna see claws? I'll show you fucking claws. 
Is the shoe the first thing you go to, like when you when I decide what, when you're like pick, figuring out what you want to wear? Is like how important is the shoe? The shoe is a big part of it for sure, because I do love an interesting shoe. It's great too now at the age of the internet, you can get big old fucking shoes for drag queens at any size. When I was growing up, they didn't have that. You squeezed your foot into a shoe size. And I have this fantasy with shoes. It's like, I'm gonna try to wear the most impossible shoes while I can, because one day I won't be able to. And so I do kind of gravitate to the most impossible looking shoe or the most artistic shoe, because if I can't wear my shoes anymore, you know, they could become lampshades. So you were saying how much it means to you to be remembered, to stand out, to not conform. Does that go back to anything? Did you ever feel that you were overlooked? Maybe. I think there's, you know, a lot of entertainers have that thing where they've known since they were children or very young that there was something, you know, there was a destiny. There was something special that was bound to happen. So I'm growing up in the 80s and 90s and seeing a lot of death. You think of life and you, you just want to grasp every moment and just kind of really do the thing. And what about growing older? How has that been with your style? Like, how has that gone? With age, you just become more and more confident. You kind of don't give a fuck as much. A lot of people, you know, when I they, they say, when I grow up, I want to be this person. I think I'm already there. I think I'm the person I wanted to be when I grew up. Gosh, all I've ever wanted to do was find a way to make a living and be appreciated, recognized. And, and now I'm suddenly accomplishing it in my life. And it's all because I'm just being myself. How fucking great. As long as I'm aging, that it's always going to be fucking fun until my last breath. If I'm Absolutely. gasping for air, there better be a fucking disco yeah. around me. What else with aging in terms of like, I'm okay, I'm not gonna lie, I'm completely obsessed with your hair. The gray hair really kind of started prematurely. I'm Asian and that happens a lot to Asian kids. And I dyed my hair black for many, many years. And then I just kept watching the roots become more and more silver. And I'm like, I think it's time to just kind of accept it and, you know, reinvent yourself and make it your signature. And it really has worked. Oh I've my never God, felt it's more, incredible. I've never felt more comfortable in my life. I love it. I have a very random yet effective skincare regimen including Botox and fillers once in a while. What is your attitude about that? And like kind of keeping mm -hmm. your hair gray, but then deciding to do that, like, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. Picking and choosing, Yeah. which I think is interesting because yeah. I feel the same way with myself. I, you pick and choose. You dye your hair. I henna my hair. Yeah, but right. I do the opposite. I'm not sure how old you are, but I'm, you know, I think we're probably- 64. You're not 64. See, you're, let me, hold on, I gotta have a drink. What the fuck? My lips, you know, as, I, as you age, are not the same anymore, and I smoke, so it's like, okay, why not just plump it up a little bit? And I'm glad to live in this time where the technology is really quite sophisticated and really inventive and successful. And that's the business that I'm in. I do drag, right. not hag. I want to look as beautiful as possible, but I will do it in, in the most comfortable way, and yeah, I'm not gonna overdo it. Not yet. Who fucking knows? You know what? I can do whatever I want. So if I decide that age 50 that I want tits and big lips, it's my body and I can do whatever I want with it. <laughs> right. It's all a form of resistance to the bullshit. You know, it's... Gosh. Well said. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> okay, let's hear about it. What is I it? don't know. It's color. Actually, this fabric is traditional African. I was told about this place in wow. um, mm -hmm. Harlem and there was so many beautiful fabrics and this one of course like stars come on and how did you come up with this i mean i think it's just the fact that it was so superhero and so glam rock i was like it needs to be a bell-bottom pant and jacket you know my favorite diana Vreeland co uh, quote is it's not about the dress but the life that you live in it so i feel that way about a lot of the things that i own it's like you can kind of give it a new life every time every day is a special occasion you know exactly. you get to live today so why not wear, wear a little costumed party look so you were talking before about being post-drag yeah i do feel post-drag i don't know i think my relationship to drag and my definition of it is really different too in what way i don't know i, I just don't feel the dip that the difference in it anymore. I feel like it's all the same person. Raja is no different than Sutan. It's all kind of the same entity, same body, same vessel. I think that eventually if you do it enough with a lot of intention, meaning, passion, 
then you, it, at some point it becomes spiritual. The time that I spend creating something is equal to anybody saying a hundred Hail Marys. It's equivalent to me, you know, gluing one rhinestone one at a time or hand stitching something together or drawing it out, imagining out, singing it out, creating it, writing it. You know, it's all meditation and prayer. What is your wildest dream? To be able to accomplish all my dreams is my biggest dream because I have so many things I want to do. Like what? I've travel and find you know, different ways of, of reaching people through art. And I want to continue this thing that I'm doing where I, I get to be the person that I wanted to be when I grew up. So that's my biggest dream is that I'll, I'll be able to do that comfortably for the rest of my life. Hey. Love you love so you. much. Love Thanks you. So like much. truly, oh God, truly, so truly, fun. truly, truly. Love you guys. Love you. This week's episode is made possible with the support of Agency, a personalized prescription skincare service from the makers of Curology. Agency stands against the idea that aging is a problem when actually it's an opportunity to grow, learn, and love yourself more every day. I'm turning 65 and I'm feeling better than ever and so happy to be pulling the veil off of this very oppressive idea that aging is something to dread. As far as my skincare journey goes, I do believe that your skin needs nourishment and healthy ingredients. It needs food. It's super cool that all of Agency's personalized prescription formulas are made for you by a dermatology provider based on your skin's needs. The brand celebrates where you are today while helping you to define your future goals. I believe that to not let aging dim your light is incredibly important to one's well-being. Sign up through the link in the description for a free 30-day trial today.